How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So happy first of the month, first of all. Um, every first of the month, we do an art challenge over in the virtual art studio, and that's going ahead from today. We are doing Inktober. We do that every October. Um, so you can head over to the virtual art studio to take part in that. There's a prompt list. And then also starting today, it's a busy month, we've got the workshops starting today and they've just gone out, the first video has just gone out. So you, if you haven't joined, the link is up above. Um, and I'm just like, oh gosh, I'm so excited because, um, so they went out an hour ago and oh my gosh, there's so many comments and, and I've had so many messages already. It's it makes me feel really emotional because it's just so nice to see how these videos just really do help people and you know even just the first one so it's just amazing um and i remember just all those years ago just thinking that i could see where people were going wrong and now it's you know these videos are they're changing lives it's just it just gives me so much like oh so much joy so anyway <laughs> what I've had from everyone taking part in the workshops already I mean they just went out an hour ago which is amazing is people now starting to ask questions which is great so keep adding the comment under the video um, keep asking questions because what I'm doing is I sit and I start to gather everyone's questions and I'll be doing live Q&A sessions because you can guarantee if you've got a question someone else will have the same question as well so don't be afraid to ask any questions as you're going along don't be afraid to challenge me on what I'm saying. I've had people before just going, um, I really don't understand why I need to do this. Um, and that's okay. Um, at the beginning, sometimes when we're learning something new, we resist it and we kind of challenge it and we get a bit defensive and, um, and that's absolutely normal. And all I will say is that the people that I've worked with over the years that have been resistant and um, kind of challenged um, the, the thought process behind all of these workshops have ended up coming around in the end um, and making massive progress. So they really do work. This framework that I created works and that just makes me like the happiest person in the world because, um, yeah, it just does. <laughs> Hey Lottie, you're here, you're ready to grow, I love it. Tina, how are you? Lovely to have you here. Um, yeah, I'm just so, so excited. So I'm like gathering everyone's questions now into a document. So over the next few weeks, um, this is what's gonna happen. So I'll be live every day at 11 and the workshop was released today and there'll be another one on Friday. So it gives you a bit of time to do the work. So there's a worksheet as well that you can download. They really start to get you thinking and just know that results don't happen overnight. This takes time. And for some people, the workshops are a big, massive shift from where you're coming from. It's a lot to take on sometimes. Um, so just know that just, just take your time with it. Take baby steps forwards. Um, really do put the time in, though, to go through the workshops and do the work because I promise you it will pay off. So find some quiet time in a cafe or in a park or wherever. They're all pre-recorded. I keep getting questions asked whether you need to attend live. No, they're all online um, for the next two weeks. So you've got two weeks to do these. Um, and then there's lots of questions. And these are the ones that I get asked, the juicy questions, like how do I price my work? How do I, which, how do I choose which platform to put my work on? How do I find the place for me? What's the place? And um, how do I use social media? How do I approach galleries? All those questions I will be answering, but not yet, because you need to go through the workshops first, because the answer to those questions then will start to make sense when I when I talk about them. So go through the workshops, and then I'm going to be answering questions in between. And then once the workshops are finished, I'm gonna be doing, um, I call them webinars, they're just live, live chats like this, but I'm gonna be going in depth into how to approach galleries. I've got a Facebook group where people have been polling their top frustrations and struggles, and I'll be 
um, choosing those top um, struggles to do deeper workshops on. Um, and I love doing those. I absolutely love doing those. But you need to do the workshops first to understand the whole picture. Um, hey, Gareth, how are you? I love, I've just been reading your questions around, um, you just asked some amazing questions around pricing and also around approaching galleries. I loved those questions. So I've just pulled all those out, Gareth. I'm going to be doing a whole session on pricing and a whole session on approaching galleries. So I will be including your questions in that and I will send you all the links so that you can take part in those. Again, there'll be replays. So, um, so yeah, there's lots and lots. Now we've kicked off. I love this time of the year. I love doing these workshops because I love um, just doing all these live sessions and getting into the deep, you know, crux of it all. And I always know that I can help people. It's just the best feeling. But what I want you to know as well, because um, the first video is about fear and I've had so many people saying they're now realizing that they're actually terrified of pricing, terrified of getting it wrong, terrified of maybe they could make it as an artist, but they're going to look silly if they don't. Or maybe, maybe they could make a living. And what if they don't do it before they die? And you know, all these things, these fears are starting to come out. And I just want to share um, this fear thing with you and just let you into a little secret. So <laughs> I've been doing these workshops for a long time and I've been doing these live sessions for three years now. We set United Art Space up. The workshops that I'm teaching now, um, I, I only started those about a year and a half ago, I think. And they've changed. This this workshop that I'm doing now is the same as the one I did six months ago because it works. And my, my motto is don't change it if it doesn't need, if it's not broken or whatever that phrase is. <laughs> um, so, um, but, but every time I did them, I kept listening and, and tweaking it and changing it. And so this time it really works because um, we're focusing on one piece of work. So all the questions you get around, why do I have to have one style and all these things, um, really, the answers come from this workshop. It works. But um, going back to when I first ran the workshops, which was probably a year and a half ago, I remember um, the night before they were going live the next day, I remember, hey Stacy, how are you? I remember sitting there and I and I worked my butt off on these, right? I've literally, I spent a year that I took the house upside down with post-it notes everywhere. I poured my heart soul into it. It was all I talked about to my husband. I drove him mad. I literally put everything I had into these workshops. Sacrificed money. I, I got rid of my other job that was paying me a load of money. Um, so I, you know, there's a lot on the line. And the night before the workshops, I turned around to my husband and I said, <clears throat> I don't want to do these workshops anymore. I don't really fancy running out of space anymore. I don't think this is what I want to do. <laughs> he just looked at me and he was like, are you joking? Are you for real? And then, and I was like, yeah, no, I really, I, I just don't think I want to do it. And he just went, he said to me, you're scared. He went, of course you want to do it. You've just spent the last year working on this. Of course you want to do it. And I went, I'm not scared. I'm teaching tomorrow about fear. This is like my first workshop lesson that's coming out. I know about fear. I'm not scared. This isn't fear. I, I know fear. This is like, I really don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and I walked away. And then about two hours later, I thought, huh, hold on a minute. <laughs> Maybe I am scared. And it was in that moment that I realized that fear has a funny way of hiding itself. And I literally convinced myself that I didn't want to run these workshops anymore. And I, I did, of course I did. They were going live the next morning. I'd never done them before. I didn't know how they were going to be received. Putting myself out there. And I was terrified once I got to the bottom of it. And thank you to my husband for like helping me recognize that. And then I realized that I was terrified. And still now, even after I've been running these workshops, it happens every time. So last night, no joke, last night I was sitting there and I was checking all the links and checking everything out. And I've run these so many times. <laughs> I am laughing because it's hilarious. And I sat there last night and I said to myself, I'm too tired to run these workshops. I'm too tired to send this link out. I'm too tired. And I laugh at myself when I'm saying it now because I know. 
and I just said, come on, Michelle, you're not tired, get on with it. And I recognize it now, so I can, I can laugh it off. Um, but sometimes when we're not expecting it, we can actually convince ourselves that that is the truth. I don't want to do this anymore. And we close it down and I could make an excuse saying, I'm sorry, I'm poorly, I, I, you know, but uh, luckily now I recognize it. And I think, of course I want to do it. I'm just scared because this is going out to 1500 people tomorrow. <laughs> um, and so it's recognizing it and it's also accepting now as well. And I, I did it when I was an artist. I remember my first ever art show. I remember, <laughs> I remember doing the art show and I hid and I pretended that I wasn't the artist. <laughs> and I was kind of like, I'd got a book and I was milling around listening to people, what people were saying, convinced that people were gonna say horrible things about my work. And I kind of wanted them to say all the things that will work so that I was right. I know I'm rubbish. They say I'm rubbish, so I'm just going to quit this now. <laughs> it's almost like I was wanting them to say the bad things um, to confirm this stupid voice inside my head. So it happens to us all, and it's never going away. That fear is never going away. In fact, Stacey, uh, Stacey's one of my members inside our hub. Um, I'm going to come back to your comment um, because you, you wrote something about that, you know, the fear of approaching people and um, it never goes away. So, um, and it's just about recognizing it. And then as soon as you can laugh at yourself as well, which I can do now, um, it makes it a whole lot easier. And one thing, another thing as well is accepting that not everyone is going to like what you do. So I know that not everyone is going to like these workshops. Not ev it's not for everyone. And so one thing I've learned over the years now is that I focus on the people that it does resonate with. And I'm, I'm really clear now on the people that I like to work with. And I really know the kind of people that I can help. And when I set up my posts on Instagram, I got, you know, quite a few people commenting nasty things. Um, and now I just ignore them. I block them and I ignore them because they're not my people. And I focus on the people that do resonate with what I am producing. And it's the same when you're an artist, and this is what the workshops are gonna help you with, is to find your people. Because what happens then is when you start to find your people and you just focus on them, you know, you, you know the people, we had it in the virtual art studio um, this week, um, people were commenting on an artwork and they were giving feedback on how it could be better, which I know they were trying to help, absolutely they were trying to help. Um, and they weren't being negative as such, I was trying to help because they feel like the work should be different and the artist is coming from a completely different place and you'll always get that you'll always get people who try and tell you how your work should be you'll always get people to telling you how, where you, you know you should be doing it this way you should be doing it that way and sometimes these people are right and it, you know it's it you've got to listen to people and take it on board or sometimes listen and think, well, no, no, that's not right. And it's about, sometimes you don't know what to listen to and you don't know what's right. And so these workshops will help you <laughs> figure that out. But um, knowing that you're never gonna be able to turn that, that noise off, those people, you're never gonna be able to avoid them. They'll always be there. Those people that don't like what you do, that think you should be doing something different, that sometimes they're horrible. Sometimes people are quite brutal and will say nasty things. And what I've learned is that it's actually not about you. When those people say those things, it's about them. They've got an issue with something and now I've started to learn that. So when I get those nasty comments, I actually feel sorry for them now. And I think it's a shame that you spend your life just scrolling and, and commenting these nasty things. And I just ignore them now. I used to feel like I had to justify and go back with some like amazing comment to justify the reason why I'm doing all of this. And I just don't bother anymore. So know that. So know that you, you can't please everyone. And so what the aim of these workshops is to for you to make art that really makes you happy. Make the art that makes you tick. Light that fire passion inside of you. And find your own people, find your, we were laughing, Stacey's kind of like the art mafia, find your mafia. <laughs> um, but when you start to find those people, what happens then is they, they get you and they start to pay you nice compliments and it gives you a boost and you start to think, okay, this is good. And so this is why the virtual art studio is so good because everyone is so supportive and the hub group that I've created is so supportive. People are all, 
lifting each other up and you need that when you're creating something so personal as well like art um you know what i'm creating now you know it's not art but it's personal it's me it's me bearing what i believe and art is what you believe and how you see and feel the world and it's personal and that fills you with fear because when you have a nasty comment it's not just about your work but it's about you and so that's why it hurts so much and so the more you work on this though and the more you get those negative comments and the people that don't get what you do the stronger it makes you um and i promise you that so just know that you cannot avoid it you cannot avoid it but it should not let you stop you shouldn't let it stop you um, from being the artist that that you can be and i just read a comment today and i can't remember who it was from saying that that they had a nasty comment online recently oh no it wasn't recently it was a long time ago because she said that she had a nasty comment and it resulted in her not making any artwork for two years two years because someone said something nasty and this is another reason i do what i do because I see this all the time. I see people, they're filled with fear and the rejection really knocks them. Um, and it, it, this is what strives me to keep going with my messaging because I've seen people pull themselves out of those dips and start making again and start getting their work out there. And there's no better feeling for me than to see someone, that transformation from someone who was crippled with fear to taking those baby steps. Sometimes, you know, it's, um, it's not all about just making a full on living. It's just being brave enough to make the art I really want to make and to get it out into the world. And then, you know, the steps come after that towards making a living. So recognizing where you're at in your journey and knowing that, you know, if you're in the early stages, it's about building your confidence, finding your voice as an artist. And that's okay. Don't worry about the other steps just yet. Just focus on what you need to focus on now. And Again, that's what I've built into the workshops. This framework really helps you see where you sit um, in in all of this, so you so you don't get overwhelmed with the whole big thing. It's really important to break everything down. So it's exciting. It's exciting. Um, eek, I love it. Gareth, cool. Looking forward to following the path. Yes, it'll be awesome. Oh, hello, Lloyd. How are you? like a runaway bride <laughs> like the run-up to walking on stage yes yeah so everyone's saying look oh my god i completely connect with this i do this at the last minute too but yeah you're right like the as if you're walking up to stage so say yeah i've done that before i had a big talk to do I prepared 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 and like right before it i thought I literally had stupid crazy thoughts like if I if I just say that I'm poorly now and I'm actually I, I, I just sat there starting to think if I just go in there now and say that I've been sick um that I've just been to toilet and been sick and maybe I could just get out of this <laughs> um literally and but do you know what that is not you talking so inside your head uh, we've got lots of different terms for it the negative committee um the chatterbox um there's loads of different whatever you want to call it but that chatter inside your head that that noise the thing that is saying oh my god go and make yourself sick do, you know don't what, you're not going to walk in there and do that talk are you you're going to make yourself look ridiculous that's not actually you talking it's the fear inside your head and this is where i think it can damage a lot of people's confidence because they think that that is them and then they start to think oh my god i'm such a rubbish person because i've just thought about making myself sick and um, but it's not you and that's why I laugh I laugh now at those silly comments inside my head because I just think that's ridiculous it's almost like I'm having a conversation with someone just go away just go away um, and we, we you know shine a light on it and the more you, you the more you become aware of what's going on inside your head the more power you have over your mind it's quite incredible but it's an ongoing working thing um, but just being really kind to yourself and knowing that you're not the one sitting there saying that it's it's human instinct human instinct kicks in and wants to keep you safe and we're crippled with fear because of the media because of what we've been told as children and so as adults you know we've got huge fear over silly little things 
Um, well, they're not silly little things, are they? You know, it's when we're being vulnerable, especially. And our minds kick in and will tell us anything to keep us safe. Go and make yourself sick. Or, or even sometimes you don't know it's the fear, like me telling myself, I don't want to do this anymore. I really don't want to do this anymore. And I convinced myself that I didn't want to do it, but I did. I did want to do it because I was really, really, really scared. And sometimes you can be saying to yourself, telling yourself stories, I'm scared, uh, no, 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 I'm not scared, um, I haven't got the money, I, I'm just, I haven't got the time, and I can't do this, I can't do that because of this. But really when you get to the crux of it, it's because there's some fear behind what you're saying. Um, and sometimes you can sit there going, no, it's not that, which is what I did. Um, but it usually is the fear. Um, I visualize, I visualize it as I have walked to the end of a long pier and now I have to jump off the end and it's high. The water is going to be cold and the fear of making that last jump terrifies me. It's that exact feeling. I think then if, um, you know, when you're feeling like that, it's like I was watching back Sharon's interview and she was saying how that kind of visualization really scares her as well. And so um get it's, it's like replacing that image in your mind rather than you just jumping off because that is terrifying is um maybe you've, you've got some armbands on <laughs> I know it sounds silly but you know chuck a pair of armbands on because what's you know you're not going to sink um and it's that back to that thing that when we do things in life we might make a little boo-boo we might make a mistake but they're all lessons, they're, they're all huge, huge lessons. If we keep holding ourselves back and not actually living, we don't learn anything. And so um, we might stumble on our words and we might get something wrong, but that's okay. And now I learn more and more that it's okay. Sometimes I've, I've sent these workshops and the links don't work. And it's like, okay, well, I just fix it. And then I send out the link. Um, and some, I, last, last time I ran these workshops, the whole site went down, my whole website went down. And a, a year and a so ago, I would have been in tears, crying. And actually last time I just, I just said, that's okay, we'll fix it. It's not because I'm not gonna sink. I've got my armbands on, <laughs> if I'm using that analogy that Stacey's used. Um, because we won't, we won't. There's always, there's always opportunities to turn things around and learn from things. Um, Sally, hello Sally, how are you? We were at a party last year and the host had a piece of my work that they had purchased. Then she started telling all the party guests about this piece. I couldn't handle it and ran out the room, hid in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, I get that, Sally. I think it's when, and then it's like, you feel like there's a spotlight on you. And all I would say, um, Sally, to that is, the more and more you just hear it and you start to push yourself. Um, Sharon's interview is coming out next week. I just finished editing it last night. Gosh, it was a long one. <laughs> I had to edit all the cackling and we were laughing and the volume, like it was screeching. <laughs> but Sharon was talking about how, you know, in her early days of being an artist, she, there was people who she'd followed for a long, long time and when she met them, she just like fell to pieces because she's because she's starting now to put her work in kind of more exclusive places. She was like, oh my God, the artist is going to be there. And she was building it up before she even got there. Like, oh my God, oh my God, the artist. Oh. And then when she got there, she <laughs> said that she'd just blur out a load of random stuff um, because she didn't know what to say. And she said, she said, I just came out with like really weird stuff. <laughs> Um, but what's happened now is, and then she cringed afterwards and thought, I don't want to do that again. But what she kept doing was going back and kept doing it. And now, and then she learned from that, that next time I'm going to have a little like script rehearse so I know what to say. And so when she goes back to those situations, she was a little bit more composed and she's got used to it. Um, cause in that moment before she just wanted to run away and then instead just blurted a load of stuff out, but she just, now she's friends with those people. Now she hangs out with them and just has conversations like with everyone else. And she's realized they're just people and she's in their circle now. So all the time when we're doing these things, it's, it's helping us. It's like warming us up. And you know, that situation that you had Sally, where you kind of run off. That situation was good because what that is doing is 
it made you uncomfortable but it, it's exposed you to that experience and so the next time someone does that you'll remember I've been in this situation before you might not run away you might just sit there and cringe and just like hold your head down but the more it happens the more it becomes normal and comfortable um so but know that it's okay it's okay to feel that fear uh, Lottie, hello. My fear is of breaking out of my safe place. I know I can make a living doing my portrait commissions, but I'm terrified of painting my soul and people not liking it because it's about a rejection of me. Oh, Lottie, how many people, and uh, some people are on now, Stacey, who I work with inside the hub, just like you. In fact, she was doing portraits and she is now realising that that is not her purpose in in her art life and she's really digging deep into into her why and and playing and uh mini mini's another example an amazing example actually she joined the hub six months ago and she joined um because she wanted to learn how to sell her portraits and she's a pet port was a pet portrait artist and joined it then same realized she said i don't think I, this is what i want to do anymore and so she said, I didn't even realize that this isn't what I wanted to do. And the same thing as you, Lottie, what she just said, she said, I think like I've held it back because I'm terrified. I'm terrified that what is in me, people are just not going to like and go, why are you doing that when you can make money out of your portraits and start to question and give you all that doubt. But what she's done is she's taken the steps and now she's running her workshops to pay her living, to fund her living while she's finding her why and she's now making art that she really wants to make and it's really exciting because she's doing it and she will start to find her people i promise you that's where it all comes from lottie and and i don't think you have to like break away completely and some people some artists have joined the hub and they have because they they said they can't they can't be in two like um art spaces at the same time so some of them have just abandoned that and moved in but some people have transitioned from one to the other and um, whilst you're figuring you know the other side of you out but I think it's so important Lottie but it's good that you're recognizing that now to say that you're terrified of painting write that down and then start to to write down but what if people do like it because you're saying but what if and what if people don't like it and then it's they reject you but what if people do like it and what if you could spend every single day making the art that really lights you up what if you start to make art that is so unique that people go wow i've never seen anything like this before and then you start to you know it, it's just um replacing that doubt with the alternative that could happen and and going for it and I've said this before, but it's not always about the destination, it's about the journey. Sometimes we have in our heads that, okay, this is, this is like the ideal. When we start going on the journey though, and this is what's happened to Minnie, by, by the very nature, listen to this story very quickly, by the very nature of Minnie deciding that she wanted to pursue her own artistic voice instead of the pet portraits, that journey has led her now, and this wasn't on the radar, to running her own workshops, she packed in her job, doing a job that she hated, then started having conversations and just had the most amazing opportunity to have this space for free, filled up her workshop. All this happened in the last couple of weeks. And now she's realized she only needs to do a few of those a year to pay her bills. Everything's changed in her life. So she couldn't have planned that. You know, that's not something she could have planned, but the, the journey and all of those opportunities actually came from her deciding that she was going to do it her own way and that I want to make art that I'm really passionate about and and all of these opportunities now to do that um, have arisen from her making that decision so we don't know where the journey has taken us and that's what is exciting and this is the thing when you go on your journey as an artist and you make the art that you want to make and you start to find your people and you really draw out that connection and I'll start to talk about all of this in the workshops as we go through the next few weeks it's an exciting journey. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not easy, but it's exciting and it can be fun. It will be scary. <laughs> that fear never goes away um, in any industry, in any with, with anyone. Um, but it's the excitement of really being the person that you are meant to be and the artist that you're meant to be and navigating your way 
um, in the world, finding that place and finding your people. Um, negative or positive comments are good at least. It means you've got a reaction. Yes, you're getting noticed. Yeah, the funny thing is um, someone else was saying this, that they were getting loads of no negative comments on their posts, but they actually do us a favor because it actually boosts the, um, the posts even more. <laughs> so they actually serve a purpose. Uh, Stacey said, I've actually responded out loud to a thought in my head and my hubby gave me a funny look and I'm just told him not to worry, he's not part of the conversation. <laughs> I do this all the time now, I speak out loud, it's quite funny. Mm. This is my breakfast, my smoothie. Oh, oh hello Mandy, I was thinking, of, oh it's so funny that you've hopped on today because I was literally thinking about you this morning. That is so funny. I was thinking about your art actually. Uh, I think I saw someone and um, someone's art and it reminded me of yours and I was thinking, oh, I wonder how Mandy's doing. And uh, the fear of success and failure is there for all artists and nothing is perfect. Yes, that's another thing. Perfection um, is pointless. All experiences are there to help build confidence and we're more capable than we think. We are more capable. Challenges are good and often what we need to jump to the next level. Yes, and I like that. So we are more capable of what we think. We really are. This, and the fear makes us feel like we're not capable. These workshops, I love them because what it's doing is it's helping find your real passion inside you, your truth, your passion, um, the things that you're good at, the art that you really want to make. And then it's helping you find your people. And so many people jump into where am I going to put it and all these other things. When you start focusing on who your work is for, that's the, that's when the confidence really starts to build because when you start getting it in front of the right people, that's when you get the nice comments and you start getting people go, I know where you need to put your work. It needs to go here. Oh, I've got this amazing person. You need to speak to this person because they're just, you know, it's all about the people. It's all about the people. Um, and so, and that's where it starts because you can't find the people until you know where, you can't figure out the where until you know who, who they are. I'm jumping ahead now. This is what I'm going to be teaching in the workshops. <laughs> oh, it's lovely to chat with you all. However it goes really well, imagine the glass of champagne you're going to enjoy afterwards with friends and the elation. Yes, actually on the whole people, yeah, want uh, you to be great and why they've come. Yes, that's it, Gareth. Isn't that nice? A way, nice way to think of it is to think about the outcome. I think too, we fill our heads with so much fear about the, the way it could all go wrong. And so we actually then start to build a, a video in our heads of people saying horrible things and people not liking our work. Then we start to build the video. I don't know, this is what I do. Um, of how that feels and you can feel it inside you feel the hurt before even anyone said anything <laughs> um you know you can start to have arguments in your head with people and they've not even said anything bad yet you, you, you start to think what would i say back if they said this and and already you're like oh my gosh it's this whirlwind then of negative thoughts but then the negative feeling in your body the, the picture that you're painting in your head so if that's going on already, you're setting yourself up for massive failure, massive um, lack of progression as well, because you're going to seriously hold yourself back if you're feeling that way. And like I said before, though, we will feel that way. And it's about recognizing it um, before it escalates. So I'm quite good now. I'm not always great at this, but I'm pretty good at recognizing things before they escalate. So years ago, I would escalate so much. I'd be having arguments in my head with people that hadn't even said anything. I'd be feeling it in my gut, I'd feel sick, I'd be petrified, I'd switch all the lights off and just go and sleep. Um, and now I can spot the triggers before I get to that stage. So I can sense a fear, uh, something that I'm telling myself and I can recognize it and either laugh it off or I love just writing it down. And like Gareth said, I start to come up with an alternative view. So hold on a minute, that's one way, um, but what if it does work? And even if um, it didn't work out the way I want it to, what's the worst thing that can happen? It's just another experience and it's another thing that's taking me closer to where I'm going. It's another lesson. Um, but what if this does work? What if I can make this work? 
and starting to think about that it's that counter argument instead trying to do that before the fear takes over because when the fear takes you down to chinatown <laughs> It's hard sometimes. I mean, it used to take me weeks to get out of a funk if, if the fear had taken over me. I could literally um, feel like a rubbish person for days and days and days, probably even weeks. Um, and if you feel like that, or if you ever felt like that, or if it's happening now, just know you can change it. Your brain can be rewired, I promise you. I came from a very, very, very bad place, and I... Um, was on medication and relied on medication and I have not taken any medication for 10 years now and have been diagnosed with all sorts of things and I managed to turn my brain around and I never ever thought I'd be able to sit here and say that so you know we've all got different extremes and some of us um, it's not so bad and for some of us it's crippling like the fear cripples us so badly um uh, but all i will say is just keep chipping away keep keep going and um, surround yourself with our lovely lovely group because everyone is supportive in our group so keep in there keep sharing your fears with us with people that will lift you back up again and know that you're normal you're absolutely normal over the years of being um i became a stuck at home disabled mum Oh, I've lost five stone in weight, no longer struggling with disability, and today I'll be hosting my first public group. Oh my gosh, to help me with my social skills, I'm going to cry, Stacey. I'm so, so proud of you. Stacey, I will give a shout out to your group anyway and see if there's any sewers amongst us. Um, share me inside the hub, share me the link to your group, and I will um, share that out, my lovely. So I'm going to head. I am so excited. Thank you so much for joining me. So workshop one has gone out. If you haven't signed up yet, a, the link is at the top so you can go um, and watch that video. And um, there's a workshop included. There's a Facebook group if you're in Facebook. Um, I'm saying that because I'm going to upload this video to YouTube later. So if you're not on Facebook, um, and you're watching this, don't worry. There's comments underneath the video um, and I'll be checking all the comments. But if you are on Facebook, there's a pop-up group which is just gonna be open just for the next couple of weeks where I'm gonna be dedicating all my time to helping, answering questions, really like take advantage of this because I don't know when I'll be running these again. So get in there, do the work, ask me questions, get to know all the other artists and really use this time to, you know, make a difference because you can, you can do this. So I'm just gonna quickly um, read Mandy's comment before I go. Sorry, I've been absent, but another family emergency. Oh, has made me prioritize, unfortunately. My art has taken a back step. Oh, which has taken weeks to come to terms with, but I know it will get better again soon. It will, Mandy. Uh, Mandy, you'll be so proud of me. I've got into my art room in the last week. I, uh, I've started um, just sketchbooking now. I've decided that just making big final pieces is too much and I'm sketchbooking. <laughs> Um, so it's lovely to see you Mandy and I hope that everything's okay at home um, so anyway guys take care and I will I'll be back live again tomorrow so see you all soon take care bye bye